I know what you're asking. Joe, is that a soundbar? Nope. But is it a soundbar killer? We're gonna find out. And I'm sure you're as curious as I am to find out how these actually sound. Let's get into it. I'd like to mention that Monolith is a channel sponsor. They did send these out free for me to review, but I'm allowed to say whatever I want about these speakers. So the first thought that went through my mind looking at this is how wide is the soundstage gonna be considering that it's confined to the width of this, what do you wanna call this? It's not a soundbar, um, just a LCR. So that's one thing. The next thing is I'm sure that they expect you to use these with some kind of subwoofer and I am using a couple, Monolith sells a bunch of subwoofers that are awesome. And I'm wondering, can this keep up with the volume that those subwoofers are able to play at? Unlike a soundbar, these are not powered. If you wanted to keep it simple, you could use something like this Denon AVR. If you wanted to go with external amplification, you can go with something like this OSD, three channel Nero XA3200, which is probably overkill for what we're trying to do here. So here you see the two flush keyhole mounts. Here we'll hook up our left channel, our center channel, and our right channel. For the purpose of this test, I'm just gonna have it here in the front. And then later on, I will mount it behind this acoustic transparent screen to get a better idea of what it would sound like if it were mounted on the wall like they expect you to have it. I previously reviewed the Monolith MOW1 and you can just think of this as three of those side by side in one box. In that video, I mentioned how all on-wall speakers have an issue just because there's a bounce off the back wall which cancels out and you typically get a dip in the response. I would expect the same thing out of these. Like I said in that video, it is a compromise if you don't wanna have big speakers and you don't wanna cut a hole in your wall to put in wall speakers. Like that MOW1, this does have a four and a half inch concentric driver, three of them. You can see the tweeter in the middle of the mid range, which acts as a waveguide. You'll also find one, two, three, six, four and a half inch passive radiators. And that helps out with a bass response. This does come with a nice matte black finish, which I think looks more expensive than the price tag suggests. I do wish that they came out with some different color options though. This does have a black magnetic grill and a magnetic logo, which you can either remove or rotate. Although I don't see anybody using this vertically. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna turn off all of my other channels and I'm gonna level match this Monolith MOW3 so that it matches about the level of the subs and do some sound demos. So this is gonna be a binaural sound demo. Make sure to wear headphones. Don't use speakers because it just doesn't work if you wanna get an idea of the spatial effects. I do calibrate the microphone so that the frequency response is flat. As long as your headphones are relatively accurate, you should get a good idea of the tonality. All right, so I have my AVR set with the front and the center to small, and I have all the other speakers off. I also made sure to turn off Multi-EQ XT32, but my subs are using a mini DSP, so they will still have equalization. All right, headphones on, here we go. Right. The sub is probably a little bit hot right now, so let me just take this down, maybe a decibel. Let's see how it sounds off axis here.
So you can tell that the sound kind of changes as you go off axis. And it's to be expected, you're outside of the range of the speakers here. All right, so after listening to some music and some movies through this, a few conclusions. First of all, what I expected about the width of the soundstage is pretty much what I expected. If there aren't speakers there, it can't really put sounds there. And so it's limited to the width of this unit. Now, as far as tonality and how loud it can get, I don't have any issues. I cut it off at 80 Hertz and it was able to play. I mean, this is a 20 by 20 space and it was able to play pretty loud, not as loud as my other speakers, but of course I have about 12, 13 speakers around here. So when I have them all going, it sounds louder than these, but they definitely do sound good with a sub without a sub. Uh, you, you don't want it without a sub. You want a sub on these. Now for movies, I think that it was actually a little bit more pleasing than I would expect just because, I mean, if you're watching a good movie, you're really focused on the movie itself. And so the dialogue was very good because it's all coming from the center. With my typical system, I usually have sounds going all around me, coming from above, things like that, which of course with three speakers in the front, I don't expect. But if I were to compare these with any of the sound bars I've heard before, this does not have DSP. So some of those sound bars, they apply different techniques to make it sound wider than it is. This doesn't have that, but tonally it sounds much more natural and just more like a good speaker than a lot of those sound bars. All right, so I have it right up against the wall behind this acoustic transparent screen. Let's see how it sounds. So with it up against the wall the way they expect it to be, I notice a few things. There's more bass because it's closer to the wall, which is what you would expect. It also surprised me because it actually sounds wider. So I'm not sure exactly why that is. Maybe there are some reflections from the back wall. Well, there definitely are. What I expected would happen was there's going to be a cancellation in the mid range area because of it being near the wall. And I could hear that, especially when I went to one of these other seats here off axis. I did notice there's a little something depending on where the person's voice was, but I did not expect it to sound wider. It definitely sounded wider. And I'm not sure if it's maybe because it was up against the wall or because it was further back. It could have also been because it was raised up and closer to my ear level. So many factors to consider, but it definitely sounded better when I had it up against the wall. If you're into graphs, I'm going to do some measurements of these. I'm sure that a lot of it is going to be similar to the measurements of the MOW1 that I previously reviewed. I'll link to that down below. And if you're interested in these speakers, I'll also link to these down below. So let's get into the measurements right now. All right, so here we are in REW, and this is the measurement of the center speaker. And let's take a look at how that looks compared to the left and right. First thing I notice is that the left and right speaker seem to have less bass for whatever reason. I'm not sure exactly why they both have the same set of passive radiators, but this is what I've noticed. What's interesting is this is the measurement of the speaker, not on the wall. It was maybe about six feet away from any particular wall. This is a measurement of the speaker on the wall where I assume they optimize it for it. The left and right seem to have less bass. And I think that's because they're pushed all the way to the side. And I think that has to do with the driver placement relative to the edge of the baffle. Here I've taken a look at the left and the center 
And I've averaged these two here in REW and you get something like this. I should mention this looks pretty good for an on-wall speaker. I do notice a bass rise here and slight increase here. I'm not sure what this is caused by. And the treble response isn't perfectly flat. It begins to rise around 8K. Here I've provided some pink noise to give you an idea how this frequency response kind of changes the tonality of the sound. I've also provided some music so you can get an idea how that affects the sound of music. Trying to look like you're winning I'm writing rhymes in the kitchen Soaking in moments we live in, yeah You always posting up pictures Trying to look like you're winning I'm writing rhymes in the kitchen Soaking in moments we live in, yeah so a lot of people ask if you can use this as a center channel by wiring it in series and I would have to say I would not recommend that and the test I did was I just connected the left and the center as a mono signal. So I sent the same signal to both of them. And then I took a spatial average of both speakers. And again, what you're seeing here is the average if each one were played separately. But when played together, you notice that there begins to be a dip here around 300 to 400 Hertz. Also the bass is boosted. What that tells me is there must be some kind of comb filtering or cancellation effect here in this region. Now when I'm playing a mono signal to both of those speakers, and let's compare that to the measurement of the center speaker. Let me align these here. So there they are aligned. And what you'll notice is when the both speakers are playing the same signal, again, cancellation here, extra bass starting around 200 Hertz. The rest after that is about the same. Now here's a look at the left speaker when both of them are playing a mono signal. And you notice an even worse response in the center speaker, comparing that to the left speaker playing a signal on its own without the center speaker, you'll notice again that it is worse when both speakers are playing the same signal. So there's some cancellation. Uh, they're adding up here and that's also not good. Extra bass. So I definitely wouldn't recommend using it as a center channel. This is meant to be an LCR where the left, right and center are receiving different signals. I did notice that this does take well to EQ. I did EQ these and this is the response I got. And so you can see a nice flat response. Let me change the color here to make it easier. All right, so the EQ'd line is black now. And so what I noticed is that I was able to take off this little bump here, this extra energy here in the mid range. And here in the upper mids and the high frequencies, it's a little bit recessed. And so I boosted those slightly. So minor changes that overall made the sound a little bit more balanced. You'll notice there is less bass here because I did cut them off at 80 Hertz. Here's something I did real quick, which is basically what the deviation is from flat. So if a perfect speaker is a straight line, this is how the center speaker kind of performs. There's an extra bump again here in the mid range area and in the upper mids and treble region, it is recessed slightly. Some people might perceive that as maybe a sound that I don't know if they'd call it boxy, but maybe just not as much detail as some people may want. Taking a look again at this left and center average, I would say the F3 here, if we're taking a look at, depends on where you measure. So some people measure from here where the peak of the base is, which is at 90. So three decibels down from that would be 87. And so that would be around, let's say 84 Hertz. Other people measure F3 kind of where the average of the line is. If you eyeball it, that would be around here. That would be around 86. So three decibels down from that would be 83.6. I've said it before that the F10 is actually what I think is more important. So again, using that same example, let's say the average is around here at 80, uh, 87. So three decibels down, so around 58 Hertz. You'll definitely want to cross this over with a subwoofer. So there you have it, the MOW3, very interesting speaker. Who are these for? I would say these are probably for somebody who is looking for a sound bar, but wants a better alternative. 
and somebody who's willing to get a sub. So who would that be? I'd say this would probably sound pretty crazy, pretty awesome in a bedroom situation, in a living room where you don't want any speakers, right? As minimal, as few speakers as you could possibly have, that's what you could do with these. Although you will have to have more stuff than a soundbar. You're going to have to have some kind of AVR that can process multiple channels. Perhaps you may want this as part of a larger system. So you can get something like this MOW3, then get a few of those MOW1s for maybe side surrounds, rear surrounds. You can even use them as height speakers. Monolith does also have some THX satellite speakers that use this same driver. And so you can set up a bunch of these, have a cool little system. And so it was interesting. And I had fun checking out these speakers. I thought they were very different. So if you have any other ideas about some possible use cases for these speakers, let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. That's it. Take care. Bye-bye.